Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. So there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of days as we close down to what's been an eventful 2021. Who deserves to win the fighter of the year? Now, a lot of people, of course, are swaying towards Canelo. Uh, free fights, free wins, and he's made boxing history. You can't begrudge him that. He's undisputed super middleweight champion not not even the great Joe Calzaghe uh, did that so yes Canelo certainly deserves to be mentioned um, I think there's been other outstanding fighters Lemachenko's had a fantastic year uh, Tyson Fury with an epic trilogy win um, you know there's young guns such as Devin Haney uh, is defending his title uh, in you know convincing manner um, you would have ha- you would have said Ryan Garcia had he pushed on from that fantastic Luke Campbell win uh, early in the year, <clears throat> but for me there has to be one outstanding winner of this award uh, and who gets my vote and that is Alexander Usyk. Um, I think he's been absolutely phenomenal um, this year in the way he dispos- dispositioned Joshua. Not only beat him, outclassed him. And very, very, very nearly stopped him. Had it been another 10 more seconds of round 12, I think he would have. Uh, the towel was about to be thrown in as well. Um, I gave Joshua probably, if I recall, three rounds in that fight. It was a beatdown. And the judges, again, a bit like the Jazeera Parker fight, just gone British judges were disgraceful in uh, awarding it far closer than it was. Um, but... I mean, it was a big win, and you, the reason why I, I go for Usyk over Canelo is because no one backed Usyk. As mad as that sounds now, all the boxing experts uh, from BT, from Sky, from The Zone, from ESPN, we're all saying Usyk is too small. They were looking at his performance against Chisora, where he's clearly finding his feet, getting the feel of heavyweight, and getting used to that weight. Um... And, you know, didn't need to be at his best. Scored his aura apart from the first couple of rounds. We, we admittedly, were uncomfortable after that. He was on cruise control. And it's exactly what Fury does with uh, opponents not in his league, fighters in his league. He just does enough. That's what Usyk did, really. And we always knew he had levels go up. And he showed them against Joshua. He just went up the gears, up in level. So he's level three against Chisora. He just moved up to level two. What's scary for me is I think he's got another level. I think he can beat Fury. I'm not saying, again, I think Fury will be a far tougher matchup for him, but he can beat him. I think he'll go up another level. I really do. I think Usyk is that good. I mean, and don't forget, he fought a prime Joshua. Joshua is in the peak years of his life. Um, you know, early 30s. He's, you know, confident. He just knocked out Pulev. And he just obviously won a rematch against um, Ruiz. He was saying he was the best camp he's had. It was literally in his home city. Down the road from where he lives in Top and White Art Stadium, 70,000. And make no mistake about it, about 65,000 of them were cheering for him. He had the British judges on his side, the ref. Let's be honest here, it was a matchroom uh, funded and backed um, card. So he had all the aces up his sleeve and he got scored. Um, and it was a beautiful performance from, from music, defensively. Uh, beautiful, poetic in his counter, in his footwork. And he, what's impressive is he didn't just rob Joshua, shall we say, by, you know, dancing around the outside of the ring. He stood his ground. He stood the centre of the ring. Come on, let's have it. And he beat uh, used to, uh, Joshua to the punch every time. Um, and what people didn't realise is Usyk hurt Joshua. He could sting him. You know, 15 and a half stone man, but speed and timing. And, and a lot of the time, Joshua didn't see that speed coming. It was too much. Um, he was flat-footed. And, yeah, Joshua was poor. He should, I agree, he should be more aggressive. But ultimately, when you keep getting beaten to the punch, keep peppered and get stung, which Joshua did in the first round, it was like a shock, wasn't it? He's been hurt. He, this guy can hurt me. And so he went back into his shell. And therefore got dominated the rest of the fight. But just a brilliant performance. And only the third man to become unified heavyweight champion in the world. And it's more impressive than David Hay, let's be honest, who beat the giant, Valuev, who could barely fight, let's be honest, compared to Joshua. 
I mean, what Usyk's done is phenomenal, and I, I, I put his achievement right up there with Ivan Holyfield. I believe he deserves to be mentioned in, in the same bracket as Holyfield. I think he's that good, and I think time will show that. I think the only heavyweight that can beat him is Fury. I don't think anyone else gets near him. He's that good. So, um, credit Usyk. For me, he gets the vote over Canelo. I don't know what you guys think. I know it's Umanara. I know a lot of people say, well, no, Canelo won fought three times. He won three times. Um, but his favourite against Yildrum, his favourite against Billy Joe, and his favourite against Plant. And I think Billy Joe wasn't at his best. I think inactivity has cost Billy Joe big time over the last couple of years of his career. I think, yes, he beat Plant, which is a very good win, but Plant gave him all kinds of problems. And a lot of people, including myself, had the fight all siding towards Plant. I think you could visibly see Canelo getting frustrated. He was saying things in the corner. Yeah, he was urging Plant to come on. He was getting frustrated. And I think the flaws that Mayweather showed are still evident there. He doesn't like a fast, slick mover. And, and unfortunately for Plant, he just, A, tied out, and B, got caught. Um, you know, and that was all she wrote. And he had to be flawless for 12 rounds. He very nearly was, but he got caught in the 11th. But that win for Canelo, although he finished the job beautifully, was not as impressive as what Usyk did to Joshua. Um, I don't think, and it wasn't as one-sided, and I don't think the Billy Joe fight was one-sided either, I, I had Billy Joe, even with Canelo, up to that beautiful uppercut punch, but you know, I'm not taking anything away from Canelo, at the end of the day, he got the job done, he gets a win, and you know, he finds a way, and you have to credit him, and I can see why people would vote for Canelo, I'm not knocking that, and his achievement, again, he's made boxing history phenomenal, but I think Jusic's performance and win was more impressive, and I think to do it and the heavier weights as well, where, you know, he's fighting a bigger guy, he's moving up, he's the he's underdog against Canelo, who was the bigger guy, certainly um, in his, his fight with Plant and Saunders, physically bigger, and the huge favourite, and, you know, against Billy Joe and Plant in Texas and in Vegas, he had the backing, the big support, and the whole, you know, mach Canelo machine behind him with the judges and the officiating. Usyk had none of that. So his win, for me, gets gets the vote all day long. My fighter of 2021 is Usyk, and he sets himself up, I think, for a huge rematch with Joshua, which I think he'll win. Won't be easy, but he'll win. And then the undisputed fury that I think could go either way. So congratulations, Usyk. Big money fights for 2022. He might just win 2022 fight of the year. That's how good he is. But he certainly gets 2021 for me.